These are a lot of resins for 3D printing, most of which were sent to me throughout these last couple of years to try out and test. The sad thing is, 90% of these are still unopened. Today, I'll explain why and also what I plan to do to fix that. So stick around. This episode is sponsored by Skillshare. More on that later. When it comes to FDM printing, I feel like I have come to the point where I know all I need to know to produce good enough quality prints with any filament that I want, thanks to the thousands of hours of trial and error I experienced in the last four years or so. The same cannot be said about resin printing. I have enough experience in that sector where I can load a pre-made profile for a specific resin, I can make decent use of Cheetah Box or Prusa Slicer to hollow out a model and make very good supports, but that is pretty much it. I never really knew how to dial in the resin the same way I dial in filament profiles, but that changes today. The reason I have all this in open resin is because I couldn't find a profile for a specific resin on a specific printer and always felt intimidated by the concept of playing around with resin. Now, although many companies offer base numbers for exposure, bottom layers, etc., for their resins, you still have to take into account the temperature you're printing at, the printers you are using, basically many variables which can alter the result. Soriatech have a great repository of uh, printing specs for all their resins, but sometimes a printer comes out which they still don't have the official numbers for yet, which is understandable. And even so, as you'll see in this video, these numbers might still need some tweaking for your environment. It's even specified by Soriatech themselves. This all changed last week when I started chatting to a guy that seemed to make it look so easy. He's constantly helping others on Fotis' Discord, so I reached out to him in order for him to teach me the way of the MSLA and uh, ask him to become my senpai. The short version is, the main and most important calibration aspect of resin is exposure. That is, the duration that the resin is exposed to the UV lights coming through the LCD screen. Get that right and you're pretty much there. Sounds simple enough, right? Well, yes, cause it actually is. But the repercussions of getting the timing wrong, even by a few milliseconds, could be the difference between success and failure. Underexpose the resin during the print and you will most likely have support failures and limited detail on your print. Overexpose the resin and your support cleanup will be more tedious with the possibility of damage during the removal process. Plus, your fine details will most likely be lost due to overexpansion of the cured resin, not to mention more stress on the FAP sheet. So getting this step right is crucial. However, there is a technique used to find the sweet spot of the exposure time, and that sweet spot could be milliseconds. Now resin curing happens in three dimensions simultaneously. You have the X and Y planes where resin has to cure from one edge to the next, or better yet, cover the whole perimeter of the image being projected. But at the same time, it also has to cure the thickness of the layer along the Z axis within the same exposure time. So first, in comes the Exposure Finder test or XP2 validation test. This model is perfect to give you the initial point of calibration for X and Y. It's a very quick print on mono screens. It takes roughly about five to eight minutes and uses very minimal resin. Essentially, what you are looking for when dialing in the XP2 is to recreate as much as possible a one-to-one -one replica of how the model file looks like in the slicer. With real life limitations, of course, meaning that it can never be perfect, especially on MSLA printers, but it can get close. And that's what we are after. For the intersection of the infinity symbol, you'll want it to barely touch, just as it is in the STL, without them overlapping or having resin cured as a pool around them. The rectangles should look as clean and square as possible, especially in the corners, giving the impression that they could possibly slide into each other. As for the holes on the side, you can ignore most of those. The reality is, that resin needs prolonged exposure times for the first few layers. With overexposure, you will get additional expansion and therefore lose all the details on those first few layers. The other thing you will most likely not see on your print are the smaller cylinder shafts. Even though a printer may have 4K resolution, the detail is way too fine. Now for the XP2 tests, it is recommended to use four bottom layers. As for resolution, I am going with 0.05 millimeter layers. Once printed, always use clean IPA and a soft toothbrush to remove any excess resin. 
Once it's cleaned, use compressed air to blow off and dry any IPA that may still be stuck in the crevices. I tend to then finally just get a very light brush and dust off the inner corners to remove any final residue. There is also no need to cure the print as that might also hinder the final results of the calibration. I'll be using a USB microscope for the sake of this video, but usually I simply take a close up photo of the print with my mobile and then zoom in. It still does the job. However, if you are into resin printing, getting one of these microscope always helps and it's about 15 bucks. These are a few examples of the XP2 validation test printed on my newly received Anacubic Photon Mono X in Soriatek fast navy gray at 0.25 second increments, starting from one second all the way up to three seconds exposure. But before we get to those, let's talk about Skillshare today's sponsor. Skillshare is an online learning community which I have benefited a lot from in the past. It was initially my sole repository of easy to follow ZBrush tutorials. It jump-started me into sculpting which in turn is now helping me venture into new territory on my channel and also Patreon. Skillshare offers thousands of creating and inspiring classes for those that want to learn new skills. Whatever the topic, Skillshare has got you covered. By having Skillshare sponsor this episode, the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click on the link in the video description will get a two month free trial of premium membership in order to explore their creativity. Skillshare can help you stay inspired, express yourself and introduce you to a community of millions. So explore new skills, deepen existing passions and just get lost in creativity. At the end of the day, what you learn today may uh, well be your true calling in the future. So thank you Skillshare. Now as opposed to other colors in the fast series of Soraya Tech, this resin needs more curing time than other Soraya fast resins due to a higher content of pigment, which in turn gives it a matte finish, which once again in turn shows off more detail in your print. It also is capable of higher resolution, making it perfect for models in miniatures. Starting from the far end of the underexposed scale with an exposure time of just one second, you can clearly see that the points of the infinity symbol aren't even close to touching. Same goes for the rectangles at the bottom. This is because the resin wasn't exposed long enough to the ultraviolet light in order for it to fully cure right to the edge of the image. Now, if we jump over to the far end of the scale with the overexposed test at three seconds, you'll see that the intersection of the infinity symbol has too much resin accumulation, which resulted in the fusion of the intersection. The rectangles at the bottom, well, they grew wider, longer, which in turn fused everything together. Going through all of these, you start seeing differences between each one. And at some point, you'll get to the happy medium. In my case here, a two second exposure time was what I felt good with. The intersection points are close enough to almost touch and the rectangle corners have retained their shape and still independently visible. The rest of the details also reach the happy medium, which I am comfortable with. Now that we have that dialed in, we have to take into account the Z axis or the thickness of the layer curing. This can be somewhere between 0.2 and 0.4 seconds, which you have to add to your XP2 test curing time. In my case, I settled for the two second exposure on the XP2 and therefore I opted for an additional 0.4 seconds bringing my final exposure for each layer to 2.4 seconds. This additional exposure time will also help with strengthening support. As a final step, print the Aimer Labs World and also the Soraya test piece. These are perfectly made prints for resin testing in all three dimensions. And if you've got the exposure right, they should print flawlessly. In my case, I can probably reduce the exposure by around 0.1 seconds just to get a little cleaner lines. But other than that, this was a success. And just for the sake of testing, I printed three miniatures by Printed Obsession, all with light support to see how each fares. One with 1.4 second exposure, one with 2.4 seconds exposure, and one with 3.4 seconds exposure. The three stone golems are still uncured as I still want to remove the supports. And aside from visual aid, I want you to hear the difference in support removal with overexposure. The first one was a fail and that was expected. I printed these solid in order to give the resin and print a bit more strain when lifting off the FEP film. With the first one, the supports failed during printing. Uh, the, the print was just hanging around, which resulted in a complete failure. Both the second and third ones printed fine upon first look. 
This model is not ridiculously detailed, so subtle differences might not be too obvious unless you look at them really closely or under a microscope. However, have a listen to the difference in the sound support removal makes with both. Notice the bigger crunch plus the support based breakage with the overexposed resin. And a reminder, these are not cured yet. The one printed at 2.4 seconds came off really easily and in one piece. And while there is always going to be minimal model damage on support contact points with overexposed resin, these will be much more pronounced. This exercise has brought a lot of learning experience and I am now really committed to upping my resin printing game. Next up will be to learn the rest of resin printing settings like light of delays, differences in lift speeds, etc. More on that in another episode. I want to thank Charo Zuck for all the help he has given me to make this video possible. I want to thank Skillshare for their continued support and also my epic patrons who allow me to continue doing what I love. If you're up for supporting me, my Patreon link is down in the video description. And if you've enjoyed this video and want to see more resin printing tutorials, make sure to subscribe or at least leave a like. That is it for today. Thanks for watching. And as always, happy making guys.